be, there's seven total in the family. Um, five of my older sisters uh, are from another woman. Um, and I lived with them at points in my life, but then they moved away. Um, but still in the same we always saw each other. Um, they had a very, very, very rough gang group. <coughs> Um, my mom and my dad, which were the, s the second marriage of my dad, we were the, I was the oldest one born, so I was always treated as the oldest child, and I never really was, and that's when my little sister was yes. not care of. But um, my little sister kind of just got cut up working, and I basically left the family at a really young age, because of, I got married, and I got divorced, and I had a kid, and I didn't have a kid, basically, because I don't know if the child was in mind. And so I left the family and had like my own life going on. My little sister never really got to mentor her. Went to college, which is something I feel bad about. Um, now she's kind of living with her boyfriend. And I am just keeping the college life going. So, yeah. uh, the last two questions, Sam and Rosa, because you have an appointment. Yeah, Sam. So, uh, Ray, right? Yeah. So, a question for you being uh, Puerto Rican from said from Humble Park, right? From yeah. Chicago. So when you go back to Puerto Rico, do you ever have an issue with identity there that people don't see you the same as the Puerto Ricans from Ireland? That's, that's uh, a really common. I, since I moved out of Humble Park, Puerto Ricans in Humble Park don't see me as Puerto Rican mm -hmm. from Humble Park. Oh. So um, just imagine the island. <laughs> um, I know from a book that Luis Gutierrez, um, the senator, Oh, yes. Congressman. In Chicago, yeah. um, he wrote a book saying that in Puerto Rico they call him Rico, and he's obviously like brown. Um, but I haven't been called that. I stay really close to my family, and because my family in Puerto Rico is really, really poor, we get called Hima, which is a common people, common folk people, which used to be a term of endearment, used to be a term of like pride to be from the country, Puerto Rico, but now it's turned into like since like the new reggaeton culture is kind of kicked in and now you have a lot of like the hip hop culture and the flashiness. So now being from the country is deemed like backward. And so I don't really get caught bingo or anything like that in Puerto Rico. I, I would get caught emo, which I think is funny. Nowadays, I haven't been to Puerto Rico in like seven years or something. Um, since my grandma passed away, so I have no more friends to go to the record. Um, so, I don't know what it would be like nowadays, because I don't, my mom doesn't dress me, so I dress myself. Maybe if I go look at flashy for a suit, they probably would come with you, but I don't know. Can I say something about that too? Yeah. Um, so I think my issue, and this is the way I put myself, but my family tells me otherwise, I like, don't feel like when I'm with my Puerto Rican family, and I don't feel like I belong. And then when I'm with my Mexican family, I don't feel like I belong. Because, and my cousins, when they, say, they, they call me a little white girl. So, and I'm just like, well, that doesn't help. But I mean, it's just because we grew up differently. And um, I don't sound like them. Um, and I'm glad that they're pursuing college. That is amazing. And uh, I think I'm setting a good example for them. Because they're young people. Um, but I just I feel that that split maybe more so just because it's like I just want to fit in somewhere. Um, and even at the Latino University Center, either raise all he's fully Puerto Rican, my coworkers are fully Mexican. And I'm just like, well, I'm here. <laughs> um, but I mean, it gives me I have two different points of view, which I think um, um, I tend to be very unbiased. Like I said, like I wouldn't join either, like or or I support both. Like I don't want to be a biased person. That's how I grew up. That's how I see things because I am two different. Not two different people, but in a sense, I am. So, yeah, that's that for me. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. And Rosa? Do, do you support the idea of Puerto Rico becoming a state in mm -hmm. the United States? We talked about this. <laughs> I, I know that it's very controversial. <laughs> very cool. And how, how would that affect um, the culture that you have there? Mm -hmm. You know, the educational system that you have, the, the language. How would that be affected? Um, I think from a political standpoint, uh, I've just heard my mom talk about it a lot too. Um, it would be economically more of a benefit to them to become a state, but culturally I think they would be very 
department. Um, they would not be the same. They would try very hard because I think it's more the, the younger gen or the older generation that wants them to do in the state. Um, because they see the economic downturns. They, they, they're, they they're all import. Like, they don't export much. Um, so they're very reliant on the U.S. as it is. And they're like, well, why don't we speak the state? Like, we're already halfway there, you know? But then the student, they're in the students. Like, the, the younger um, population is more so like, no, like, we need to keep, like, they're, they're the problems. And I guess it's just because the older people are just them, like, no. Um, I personally wouldn't like to see it turn to a state. I think the island is beautiful, and I don't, like, the way it is is fine. I think it's very, very unique, the situation they have. They have protection from the United States without the detrimental, like, aspects of being part of the U.S. So it's like, we're not hated by other countries because of you know, the status that they, of Puerto Rico. Um, my end, that was a good mistake. <laughs> um, I think I kind of simulated what I would feel from the way I spoke about Puerto Rico. Um, in the World War One, um, I am completely against American imperialism in Puerto Rico. Um, I completely believe in independence um, for Puerto Rico. Um, there's so many issues with the fact that America is not part of the international courts because they probably because of so many things with CIA. But they are part of the UN, and the UN has a committee, a colony committee, where after they joined the UN, all nations were supposed to get rid of colonies. And so what happened in 1952 was that the US changed the status of Puerto Rico to the Commonwealth. Or in Spanish, is libre asociado, estado libre asociado, which is free associate state, which is an oxymoron, because you can't be free, associated, and a state. Um, I mean, as far as like the ethical issues, there's many. Uh, as far as what America's done to Puerto Rico, um, as far as uh, moral issues, also. Now, the conversation about well, if it wasn't for America, Puerto Rico would sink economically. I also think that's a bullshit conversation and an argument. Um, the reason why is because Puerto Rico right now is the poorest uh, land that America owns. It's poorer than Louisiana, it's poorer than any of the worst states that we have in the U.S. Because of that, more Puerto Ricans have migrated to the U.S. than ever before in this time period. Um, also, there are more Puerto Ricans living in the U.S. than in Puerto Rico. The way of living in Puerto Rico has gotten so bad that they're leaving Puerto Rico in high, high numbers. When you have more people of Puerto Rican descent in America instead of Puerto Rico, it makes you wonder if being with America is really helping their economy. It does help that they can travel back and forth, but that that's just not a necessity. If um, America was to back out Puerto Rico, so far they backed out the military, um, which was another issue with um, them testing bombs. Someone died mm -hmm. because they were testing bombs in Puerto Rico. In Vieques. Um, in Vieques. Um, a lot of the Things that happened to Puerto Ricans as far as before birth control was introduced to the higher class in America, it was tested on Puerto Rican women. Um, radiation was tested on Puerto Rican men to give them cancer on purpose to see the effects of it. Very much so, like what happened at Tuskegee with um, the African American mm -hmm. population where they gave them syphilis to see what happened. Uh -huh. um, Puerto Ricans were always in the front lines of every single war, um, and they're the only ones that cannot really ever back out from a war. They are automatically attracted. So America has a reserve of army men and women um, in the island. And so I don't think it's fair to the people of Puerto Rico. Um, so either change the way America, I mean, it's just against, it's against the law to have a colony. Puerto Rico is still a colony, and recently it was deemed by the UN that's still a country. And Obama just has an answer that. I went there um, three, three, four weeks ago. I went mm -hmm. there, I went to Vieques, and it was very shocking to see the signs, you know, like big letters saying, um, que era, um, 
regresen nuestra tierra como la encontraron. Uh, please return our land the way you found it. And they were talking to the army because they used to have bases still there. Have, They're still testing. Nuclear heads are still there. Yeah, it, 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 it was shocking for me to see that. Things that I read in books 10, 50, 15 years ago, they're still happening. Yeah. And not to mention also the, the people have to learn American history. You go to Puerto Rico and you ask them who's the leader of Puerto Rico, who's one of the first leaders of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico don't know. You ask them who's the first president of the United States, they'll tell you George Washington right away. Hmm. I mean, that's, that, that is, I mean, to someone who's patriotic and very much into the American culture, it sounds like a beautiful thing, but it's, Puerto Rico is not America. And so, I feel that Americans in America should learn their history, but Puerto Rico is, Puerto Rico should learn theirs. Thank you so much.